Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze a property cantilever beam. This beam is having the span of L and it is subjected to a point load W in the center. First we are going to find the expressions for the fixed end movement at A and for the vertical reactions. Then we are going to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. We are going to derive the expressions for the deflection in the center and the maximum deflection at its location. Finally, we are going to derive the expressions for the slope in the center and in the propped end. First, we are going to find the prop reaction RB. Since in the point B there is a prop, the deflection will be zero. Using that concept, we can make this expression. The upward deflection due to RB and the downward deflection due to W should be same. Then only in the point B, the deflection will be zero. In the point B, to find the deflection due to RB and to find the deflection due to W, let us use moment area method. In this method, first we have to find the bending moment in the point A due to RB. Then we have to find the bending moment in the point A due to the load W. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. First, let us draw the bending moment diagram due to RB. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be positive, and the distance is L, so RB into L. Since it is positive, we have to draw the diagram above the line. The load W is acting in the clockwise direction, so that will be negative, and the distance is L by 2. W into L by 2, we will get WL by 2. Since it is negative, we have to draw the diagram below the line. Let us keep this diagram as 1 and this diagram as 2. Now let us find area 1 x1 bar. This is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of a triangle half into bh. Here b is l and the height is rbl. Let us find x1 bar. If we take a right angle triangle, the centroid distance towards the right is 2 by 3 into B and towards the left is 1 by 3 B. Here we are finding the centroid towards the point B because in this point only we are going to find the deflection. So we have to use the formula 2 by 3 into B. Here B is L. Now let us find area 2 x2 bar. This is also a triangle. We know the formula for the area of the triangle half into BH. Here the breadth is L by 2 and the height is WL by 2. We know that this centroid distance is 2 by 3 into B. Here the breadth is L by 2. So 2 by 3 into L by 2. But we are finding the deflection in the point B. So we have to add the remaining distance. The remaining distance is L by 2. So for x2 bar we will get this. We know that in the point B the upward deflection due to RB will be equal to the downward deflection due to W. To find these two deflections we are using moment area method. In that method, the formula to find the deflection is area x bar upon ei. Using that formula, we can make this expression. We know that in this beam, the flexural rigidity ei is constant. So we can eliminate ei. Finally, we will get this expression area 1 x1 bar is equal to area 2 x2 bar. We have already found area 1 x1 bar and area 2 x2 bar. Let us apply them. We can eliminate 2. 
L into L into L, we will get L cube. L into L, we will get L square. 2 into 2 into 2, we will get 8. We can eliminate this 2. For these two terms, we can take LCM. Finally, we will get 5 L upon 6. 6 into 8, we will get 48. Then we can take L cube upon 3 on the other side. It will come inversely. And then we can eliminate L cube. 3 upon 48 is 16. Finally, we have derived an expression for RB, which is 5W upon 16. Now, let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 and find RA. RA and RB are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. W is acting downwards, so it is negative. For these two terms, we can take LCM. 16 into W, we will get 16W. Finally, for RA, we will get 11W upon 16. Now, let us apply the rule sigma M is equal to 0 and find MA. To find MA, I am going to take movement apot A. In this case, I am moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anti clockwise will be positive. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it is positive and the distance is L. The load W is acting in the clockwise direction, so it is negative and the distance is L upon 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it is positive. For these two terms, we can take LCM. Let us keep 16 as LCM. Finally, for MA, we are getting a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. Before making the shear force diagram, let us find the shear force values. Up to shear force at just left of C, let us use the right hand side rule. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Up to at just right of C, from the point B, let us use left hand side rule. Upwards will be negative and downwards will be positive. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to make the bending moment diagram. Before making the bending moment diagram, let us find the bending moment values. The point B is a simply supported end, so the bending moment at B is 0. Let us find the bending moment in the point A. For that, we can apply the right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be negative. We can find the moment in the point C either from the point A or from the point B, but it is easy when we calculate from the point B. In this case, we are following left hand side rule, clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Or B is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be positive and the distance is L upon 2. Finally, for the bending moment at C, we are getting 5WL upon 32. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. In this point, the bending moment becomes 0. In this point, let us make a section at a distance of x. We know that in this point, the moment is 0. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction, so that will be positive and the distance is x. Finally, for x, we are getting 3L upon 11. If you wanted to calculate the distance of point of contraflexure from the right side, we have to subtract 3L upon 11 by L. When we do that, we are getting 8L upon 11. In this beam, in the point A, there is a fixed support. So, in the point A, slope and deflection will be 0. In the point B, we have a vertical support. So, in this point, there will be no deflection. 
but there will be slope. Now we are going to find the slope in the point B, the slope and deflection in the center C. For that we are going to use Macaulay's method. We have to make sections. In this beam there are two different parts AC and CB. So we have to make two sections one section in AC and one section in CB. You can see that I have made two sections. The first section at a distance of X from the point B. The second section also at a distance of X from the point B. Now let us find the movement in the sections. We are going to find the movement from the point B. In this case, we are moving towards the left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. This reaction is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is x. So 5w upon 16 into x. The load w is acting in the clockwise direction. So it will be negative. For this load, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus L by 2. This equation should be separated by the dotted line. Up to the distance L by 2, we have to only consider this term. If we go beyond the distance L by 2, we have to consider both of these terms. We know that the movement mxx is equal to ei d square y upon dx square. Now let us integrate on both of the sides. For integrating x, we can use this formula. And for integrating x minus l upon 2, we can use this formula. When we integrate d square y upon dx square, we will get dy upon dx. When we integrate x, we will get x square upon 2. And when we integrate x minus l by 2, we will get x minus L by 2 the whole square by 2. C1 is the constant. 16 into 2 we will get 32. Let us integrate this equation on both of the sides. When we integrate dy upon dx we will get y. When we integrate x square we will get x cube upon 3. When we integrate x minus L by 2 the whole square we will get x minus L by 2, the whole power 3 by 3, 2 into 3, we will get 6. When we integrate C1, we will get C1x. C2 is the new constant. 32 into 3, we will get 96. In this beam, in the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. We know that dy upon dx is the slope. So when x is equal to L, dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply x is equal to L and dy upon dx is 0. When we do that, we will get C1 which is equal to minus WL square upon 32. In the point B, there is a vertical support. So there will be no deflection. So we can make a condition. When x is equal to 0, y also will be 0. In this equation, let us apply x is 0 and y is 0. When we apply, we have to be very careful. We should not take this term because this term is only applicable beyond the point C. But we are applying this condition in the point B. So we should not consider this. When we apply this, here we will get C2 which is 0. In the EI dy upon dx equation, let us apply the value of C1. This equation is the slope equation. Let us keep this equation as number 1. In the EI y equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. When we apply, we will get this. This is the deflection equation. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now let us take the first equation and find the slope in the property end and in the center. 
first let us find the slope in the center we know that in the center the value of x is l upon 2 so instead of x we have to apply l upon 2 no need to consider this term we know that this term is only applicable beyond the point c for x i have applied l upon 2 l upon 2 the whole square we will get l square upon 4 32 into 4 we will get 128 then using the calculator we can get this value we know that dy upon dx is the slope since we are finding the slope in the point c we can denote that as theta c finally for theta c we are getting wl square upon 128 ei now let us find the slope in the property end we know that in the point b x is 0 so here we have to apply x is equal to 0 when we do that we are getting theta b which is minus wl square upon 32 ei now let us take the deflection equation and find the deflection in the center we know that in the center x is l upon 2 so instead of x we have to apply l upon 2 no need to consider this term l upon 2 the whole cube we will get l cube upon 8 when we multiply these two we will get 768 then we can take a calculator and then subtract 1 upon 64 by 5 by 768 we will get minus 7 upon 768 we can take ea on the other side it will come in the denominator for the deflection in the center we have got a negative value that means it is downward deflection now we are going to find the maximum deflection when the slope is zero there will be the maximum deflection let us take the slope equation and then equate that to zero the maximum deflection occurs between c and b so no need to consider this term we can take this term on the right side so it will become positive we can eliminate 32 and w then we can take 5 on the other side so it will come in the denominator we can take square root on both of the sides finally for x we will get l upon root 5 so this is the location where the maximum deflection occurs now let us take the deflection equation and instead of x let us apply l upon root 5 so that we will get the maximum deflection here also we should not consider this term finally for the maximum deflection we will get a negative value that means it is downward deflection now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video